Hi, everybody. This is Bob with CellTechProductions.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at recording with a direct box, or better known as a DI box. So let's get started. So what I have pulled up here is a recent recording I did with guitar player Tony Gallo. Now, the way I record an electric guitar and bass is to use a direct box. By doing that, it allows me the option to reamp the guitar later if needed. Now, make sure you check out my video on reamping an electric guitar. It's kind of a companion video to this one. Now, let's get some basics out of the way. So what is a direct box? A direct box, like the radial J48 I have here, converts high impedance, unbalanced instrument signals, like the one coming from my guitar, into a low impedance, balanced mic signal. This is the mic cable coming out of the balanced output of the DI box and going to my audio interface or recording desk. The through port uses another guitar cable and goes to my guitar amp. Now, if you're not using a guitar amp or an amp simulator like an 11 rack, then you can just skip the through port. Now, there are two basic types of direct boxes, active and passive. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But the radial J48 is an active direct box. Active DIs require phantom power. Now I'm getting this phantom power from my audio interface through this mic cable. I'm also using the through port that allows me to send the unaffected signal to my guitar amp. So why do I want to do this in my studio anyway? Well, there are several reasons, but here's a couple. This setup allows me to split the guitar signal and send one signal as a balanced output to my audio interface for a nice, clean, unprocessed track. The through port allows me to send an unaffected signal to my guitar amp. Now this is the same signal that would be coming out of my guitar anyway. By having these two signals, I can simultaneously record my guitar amp with a mic and a clean version of the same performance recorded on a separate track. This is the setup I use for recording every electric guitar and bass. Now you may be asking, why do I want a clean version if I already know the sound I want out of my amp? Well, that's a great question. And most of the time, the recorded amp track is all that you need. However, there are occasions when you get to the mixing stage that you need a different sound for your guitar. Maybe more drive, grit, or sustain will work better in your track. So by recording a clean guitar track, you preserve the original performance that you can now reamp or process in another way. Now, even if the artist is still available to do another take with a different amp tone, sometimes it's very difficult to recreate the original performance. You'll also find times when the amp effect was maybe too much for the uh, track, and you can simply tame it down by mixing in some of that dry, clean signal. In that case, you're using both tracks in the mix. Let me show you the two tracks we recorded in one take using this DI box. So here's Tony's guitar just soloed up. Now this is um, using the through port and this was going to the amp that I mic'd up. And here is the unprocessed or dry signal that we use the balanced out from the direct box and it went right into the converter. And this is what we got. Now, direct boxes have 
other benefits like allowing you to send guitar signals over a much longer distance without gathering noise. Now this may be helpful in live settings or in the studio. Now some of your better DI boxes like the J48 have other features that are handy. By the way, I'll put a link in the description so you can check this DI box out. Now, this DI box offers many of the more popular features like a minus 15 dB pad. Now, this is great if you have a really hot signal you're trying to tame down. Uh, a ground lift, if you have ground loop problems when connecting to other equipment. A low cut filter at 80 hertz. This works very nice for acoustic guitars and a polarity flip. Active DI versus passive DI. Active DIs, like this one, require phantom power to power a preamp. So an important distinction between an active and passive DI box is the active DI has a preamp that boosts the signal. So typically, if you have an active instrument, you want to use a passive DI. And conversely, if you have a passive instrument, then you'll want to use an active DI. So how do I know if my guitar or bass is active or passive? If your guitar uses a battery, then it has a built-in preamp and it's considered an active instrument. If it uses traditional guitar pickups with no battery pack, like a Strat or a Telecaster, then it's a passive instrument. So the question becomes, in my home studio, maybe I have both types of instruments. Do I need to buy an active and a passive DI? Well, not really. One of the things that the J48 really does well, and probably why it's considered the industry standard, is the way it handles varying instrument voltage. Cheaper models may have inferior electronics with limited rail voltage capabilities, like three volts, for example. So what does that mean? If you plug in a guitar that generates six volts, you've exceeded the capability of your DI box and you'll get clipping. The J48 solves this problem by having the capability to handle nine volts. Beautiful, clean tone with long cable runs for both live and studio work. This unit is definitely worth the extra money because of the quality you get in the preamp and it can handle both passive and active instruments. So it's like having both types of DI boxes in one box. Now for bass guitars, I almost always prefer the sound of the DI signal. However, sometimes I reamp with my Line 6 bass pod. And then for a little more flexibility, um, there's times that I'll mix the two tracks together. Let me play the bass guitar in this track um, and let you hear what the DI signal sounds like. I'm using a, uh, a PV bass here. And here's what that bass guitar sounds like, just with the balanced out right into my converter. And in the track. So I love that clean sounding bass tone. Now, if you're running your own recording studio, you probably already have one of these. Now, if you play electric guitar, bass, um, you plug in an acoustic electric, or even play keyboard, a DI box is a must. So there you go, guys, the basics of a direct box. Give me a thumbs up on this one, and go check out my video on reamping an electric guitar. I'll put a link in the description. Please comment and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.